Knowing the hero's journey as I do, it has become a filter through which I view uh, the contents of my own life. And I realize that each one of us will go through hundreds, if not thousands, of hero's journeys throughout our life. Um, but in this video, I want to tell you about uh, a hero's journey that I'm starting on right now and, and what the call to adventure was and kind of where I see myself in, in the circle as, as we speak. So uh, I was reading a, a book very recently uh, by a guy named Kieran Legrese and it's called The Rebirth of the Hero. And, it, and it's a book that uh, really kind of highlights the parallels between Joseph Campbell's hero's journey and uh, Carl Jung's ideas around individuation. And if you've read The Hero with a Thousand Faces or any of, of Campbell's work, you know he was he was very aware himself of these connections. And he, he based a lot of his thoughts about the hero's journey on what he knew about uh, Jungian individuation. But Legris's book really kind of highlights those and really kind of explains them uh, very clearly. And as I was reading it, I was like, wow, the, this book is like full of thoughts that I've had. And it's full of the things that I think about all the time. And in some ways I thought, wow, this was the book that I would have written. But then the more I thought about that, I'm like, well, you know, it's really not because uh, Legris, uh, he's, he's an academic. And so his tone in the book is very academic and it's not as dense as, um, Campbell's tone at times, Campbell, especially in Hero of a Thousand Faces, it can be very hard to penetrate on your first try. Uh, it's a very dense, dense book. And Legris is, it's dense, but it's not as dense as Campbell, but it's still a very academic sounding book. And I thought that's not the book I would write. Uh, and I feel like, um, I, I've never really seen the book I would write. I've never seen somebody who tries to take the hero's journey and really put it in very practical, applicable ways that you can you can kind of connect to without having some kind of academic background or a deeper understanding of, of the hero's journey or, or Jungian thought. Uh, in, in some ways, as great as Legris's book is, and as much as I loved it, it's kind of preaching to the choir. It's kind of talking to people who kind of already know this stuff a little bit, but then it's not that he's not bringing new understandings and new revelations to it, but um, it works best, I think, if it's read with a certain foundation in place. And so I thought, you know, the, the, I've never seen the book that doesn't require that, that kind of attempts to take you from zero understanding to uh, a practical understanding. And I thought, you know, that's that's really the book I would write. And um, but I'm, I, I you know, I've done some writing. I, I was a columnist for years and I actually, actually won some awards for the writing I did. But I, I don't think of myself as a uh, writer in the sense of writing a book like this. Um, and so I thought, well, what would I do then? And uh, you probably know if you've been um, around this uh, channel very long, I, I'm a comic book guy. I, I've read my first comic book I got when I was three years old and um, and they have been a mainstay in my life. And I've, I've, I've created comics. I've been published in uh, comic anthologies that were nominated for Harvey Awards. And um, I've self-published some comics and stuff. And so that's kind of, I figured out is my, uh, my language of expression. And so I thought, you know what, if I was going to do this book, I would do it as a comic. And, and that all, that, you know, all of a sudden this project gets very niche because it's a comic about the hero's journey. And so, you know, that does not have broad mainstream appeal. But I thought, you know what? Who cares about broad mainstream appeal? Like there, there's a person out there who's just like me, who if they were walking through a store and they saw uh, a comic about the hero's journey and not a comic like, you know, a single floppy issue, but like, you know, a, a trade paperback. If they, if they saw a thick comic uh, in a bookstore about the hero's journey, they would go nuts because I would. If I was walking through and I saw that, I'd be like, this is the thing I've been looking for all my life. And so I realized I need to create the thing that I want to read, 
that I want to uh, ingest, that I want to uh, get excited about. Um, if, if no one out there has made it, uh, then I need to make it and I need to make it the way that I would and it needs to be my voice and my expression and and my drawings um, and so that's what I started doing um, and so I, I this uh, you know this this YouTube channel it has kind of floundered a little bit as far as what it's about you know it started really talking about the daemon and I love that topic but eventually you have to stop talking about the daemon and you have to start listening to it. And like, what is it telling you to do? Well, this is what it's telling me to do, to follow my bliss. Um, and I, I was listening to uh, Joseph Campbell's, the audio book of Pathways to Bliss. And he, he told the story, I think I've told this story here before, but it's all about how um, Carl Jung had just... Uh, he and, and Freud had kind of ended their partnership and he was kind of lost. And he's like, what is, what's my purpose? What's my myth in life? What am I living here for? And he, the question he asked himself was, what did I like to do when I was a little kid? And what he would do when he was a little kid is sit by the riverside and stack rocks and make little buildings and cities and stuff. And he's like, well, I'm an adult now. I'm gonna do the adult version of that. So he bought some property and he started building a castle on that property. but And so by asking himself, how did I like to spend my time when I was a kid? He was able to tap in to that um, kind of unadulterated uh, potential in himself. And so when I ask myself, what did I like to do when I was a kid, if, if I didn't have to do homework or chores or whatever, I would read comics and I would make comics. And so that's what I'm going to do. That I'm following my bliss that way. Um, and so, so this channel, like I said, it, it's kind of, we have, I haven't been sure what it was for, but uh, it's going to be become about sharing my progress uh, uh, on this book and, and sharing my work as I go. And um, right now on the weekends, I, I'm working at a factory, uh, three days of 12 hour shifts. And those 12 hour shifts are brutal. And so something else I'm doing is I'm starting a Patreon. Um, where you can see the pages as they're done. I'm gonna upload every page that I get done in order so that you can follow along there. And then there's gonna be a tier where uh, when it's all done, you can be sent a, a signed copy. Um, and, and so not only am I gonna start creating this thing, but I'm gonna try to use this thing to get out of this factory uh, because I turned 50 in two weeks and uh, my knees hurt. So um, I want to I want to do this. I want to and because, you know, you get one shot at life and, and I don't want to die thinking, oh, could I have done that? Could I have made that book? Well, I'm going to make it. I'm going to create it. Uh, so anyway, that's that's my hero's journey. That's beginning. That's how I'm following my bliss. And I would love it if you found uh, this information in this channel about the daemon or about the hero's journey or about mythology or any of the stuff I've talked about. If you found it helpful or interesting, follow along and um, watch me on this journey as I uh, create this thing. And, and there will be missteps and there will be celebrations and all these things that happen on the hero's journey. And I'll try to outline for you where on the hero's journey, I feel like I am at a given point. Um, I have, you know, reading this book was the call to adventure and thinking, uh, oh, I, that's the book I would write, but uh, I'm not an author. That's kind of the refusal of the call. But then um, supernatural aid in the form of listening to that Pathways of the Bliss book was kind of this calling this and no, you, you could do this. You have to do this. And so right now, as I'm making the book and I'm trying to figure out how to how to fit working on pages into um, my weekend job and then being a father and being a husband. And here, here's a little bit of honesty. My mom is dying right now. Uh, they have called hospice in. So I'm spending uh, several days a week there. And so fitting it into all of that and still getting it done, um, I've crossed the threshold. I'm in the belly of the whale and I'm saying, OK, this is what. Um, this is what the world over here looks like. It doesn't look like the world of not doing this. Uh, that world's kind of easy, and relatively speaking. Um, this In this world, you have to figure out how to fit this stuff in and how to do this. So, so 
Um, there's a little uh, snapshot of how this is already following the hero's journey. And because of that, I know what's coming. I know there's a road of trials coming. I know uh, there'll be a moment where I meet with the goddess, where I, um, where creating this book um, feels like the expression of who I am and my bliss. But then there's the atonement with the father, where I have to figure out, you know, what is the authority authority in my life that would um, maybe have opinions about this book and whether I should be doing it and how do I become the authority and say, no, this is it. This is what I'm doing. Um, and and you know, a lot of steps past that. But that's the great thing about the hero's journey is you know what to expect. It tells you what's coming when you step out on this road. So anyway, uh, that's what's going on. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. We're getting a lot of new subscribers and I, I appreciate you guys being here. And um, let's do this.